The police fatally shot a black man in the back of the head. Now I'm going to first show you the video from the officer of why this black male had an interaction with the police. Here it is. Hey, stay in the car. Stay in the car. Stay in the car. Get in the car. Dude, I'm stopping you. Do you have a license? Do you have a license? For what? I'm stopping you. Do you have a license? What done? Do you have a driver's license? Do you speak English? Yes. Can I see your license? <laughs> what does that? The plate doesn't belong in this car. The plate doesn't belong on the car. It is over a tag, okay? Uh, the black male is Patrick Lyoya. Uh, Patrick was pulled over by Grand Rapids police. Now, the video from the officer's footage, his own camera, went out, magically stopped right before he shot and killed the black male. Here it is. Let go of the taser. What's the problem? Let go of the taser. According to the police officer, his body camera simply malfunctioned right before he shot and killed this young black male in the back of the head. And then it started working again when they, uh, when officers responded and paramedics came to attempt to save his life. Now remember, there's a bystander uh, who also recorded. Here's that recording. Let go, Taser! Thank you, Jen. How many cars you got going? Drop Taser! Everyone. Get back! Get back! Let's put up a picture of the victim here. I'm going to explain a few things. Number one, that man should be alive. Number one, let's keep his picture up. That is a confused individual who is simply wondering why he's being pulled over. Patrick Lyoya had no idea that the moment he was looking at the police officer, that moment would soon expire his life. Just because someone, and I know I will get pushback when we post this on our YouTube page and Facebook watch, and people will say, well, Doc, he deserved it. He was struggling with the police. You have to understand something. Just because someone may deserve to see a judge does not mean they deserve to see their creator. He should be alive. And I'm going to prove how police officers have routinely allowed an individual who happened to be of a different hue, a different complexion, survive in a situation that was much more dangerous to the cop. Now, I have to also remind everyone a taser is considered to be a non lethal device. It is so non-lethal that in order to be taser certified, the police officer must be tasered during training to be certified to have a taser. A cell phone video from a bystander shows a police officer shoot Patrick Lyoya in the head while Lyoya is on the ground struggling with the officer. Grand Rapids, uh, Rapids police chief. Eric Winstrom showed dash cam, cell phone and body cam video of the shooting Wednesday, April 13th during a press conference at City Hall. Kent County prosecutors in a statement released Wednesday said no decision will be made on potential charges against the officer 
until a state police investigation is finished. Prosecutor Chris Becker said the investigation will include a review of all videos and witness statements. He asked for community patients and said the review would take time. He did not specify how much time, all right? Um, it's a bunch of bull. You know, when they say things like that, the fix is in. Just understand that. They're trying to figure out how to kick the can down the road, allow some of the media attention to decrease. And then they will come out with their normative finding that the cop was justified. I hope I'm wrong. There's more. Uh, Patrick Lyoya, 26 years of age, was shot and killed April 4th, following what police said was a, uh, was a traffic stop and struggle with an officer at a Southeast Grand Rapid, Rapids intersection. Now, once again, people are going to say, well, the officer feared for his life. Really? He feared for his life. There's a man on the ground. Yeah, there's a struggle. The guy doesn't want to go to jail. But should that give a license for the police officer to become judge, jury, and executioner? You have to ask yourself these questions because once they knock on your neighbor's door and you say nothing, they will eventually knock on yours. So I'm saying something, I hope you say something as well. And let me remind you of a story we covered just a few days ago on Indisputable of a white male who was wanted for murder who actually stabbed a police officer multiple times inside of a home with other cops and that person was not killed. Put up the picture of that criminal. Mm. But what do we have here? You see the man you're looking at, his name is Matthew Lands. Matthew Lands stabbed an officer multiple times inside of a Sandy Springs, Georgia home. Was released from the hospital late Friday after that incident and then taken into custody according to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. The GBI said it was asked to take over the case. Now there's some interesting facts here. The guy was already wanted for murder. He committed burglary inside of somebody else's home. You had multiple police officers inside of the home begging and pleading with the white male, please come down, Mr. Bad Guy. We don't want to hurt you. He comes down the stairs. They don't rush him. There's no SWAT. There's no grenade. There's no shooting. He comes downstairs. He finds one of the cops and he starts to stab that cop. Put up the picture of him stabbing the police officer. That police officer. Could have died, multiple stab wounds, repeatedly in the back and the neck. Police said the officers attempted to use a taser on lands without success. So what happened? All of these cops, even after lands, fought the police, stabbed the police. They still fought with them, tried to use tasers. They didn't try to use a gun. The fight goes from inside of the house to outside of the house. Still, nobody kills him. And then a cop shoots to wound him outside of the home. He is at that time arrested, taken to a hospital, and then later booked. He will have due process. So the question is, why is it? That Mr. Lance posed a much more significant threat to law enforcement, had already proven that he's willing to kill law enforcement. Why is it that his life was spared? Why was his life valuable to the cops who decided not to kill him? Why did he get the benefit, the right of due process, but the black male did not? Fair, and you've covered a lot of these stories, brother. I'm proud of your reporting as always. Give us your insight into this. Well, you know, you made several points that were exactly what I've been thinking since I first saw that video yesterday. And that is that this man was robbed of his due process, his constitutional rights. I mean, obviously, yes, he was murdered, and that's the big issue. But when these cops do go out there, as you pointed out, they're judge, jury, and executioners. 
running from the police, resisting the police is not a capital offense. But he was executed by that officer in that video. What we just witnessed was a public execution for the crime of resisting a police officer. And also to your point about the people saying, well, he shouldn't have resisted. He should, listen, how many videos have we seen of people not resisting that still get murdered by the police, right? You get a knee on the back of your neck. You get a chokehold until you die. That man had every right to be terrified of what that officer would have done to him even without the gun. Because we have seen too many of these instances. I mean, I, I, I never in my life thought I would be on social media watching people get executed by police officers. Mm. But that's what we see these days. That, that's what's coming out constantly. And again, as I always say, thank God people have their phones out. Otherwise, we wouldn't know most of this is happening. It would get swept under the rug. Nobody would pay any kind of penalties for this whatsoever. The families would grieve in the shadows and the cops would get away with it. And unfortunately, they still too often get away with it even with the videos. But this problem isn't getting better. Yeah. The police are not doing better jobs. They're doing the same thing they have always done. And we have to keep paying attention to this because what we just witnessed again, was a public execution for the crime of resisting a police officer, which of course is not a capital offense. That's right, and listen, uh, Farron, I believe this cop turned off his body camera intentionally. I think he believed that no one else was recording. He's in an area that he's familiar with. He knows there are no other cameras fixated on that location. But it just so happened that somebody was recording as well. Think about this. If the bystander had not recorded, we would have never known how violent and insane that killing was. We would have never saw it. And he would have simply claimed, well, the body camera malfunctioned during that pivotal time.